So let's go and talk about this, guys. Um, now, to again, we're just going to identify the amplitude, the period, um, phase shift, vertical translation, uh, the domain, or not the range, but the vertical asymptotes as well as the range. So let's just kind of go through the basic ones here. Let's um, now again, I didn't say amplitude because remember, amplitude was the half distance from the max to the min, right? Look at this graph. There is no maximum point or minimum point. Agreed? Okay. So don't be writing in amplitude, but let's do our period. Um, so remember, period is going to be two pi divided by b. Well, x over 4, guys, is equal to 1 fourth x. Right? Remember that. So it's not 2 pi divided by 1. It's not 2 pi divided by 4. It's 2 pi divided by 1 fourth. And then not the first time I've said it, not going to be the last. Whenever you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. reciprocal right? So you could write it like this. Or once we get really good at it, we can just say that's 8 pi. So again, think about this. What, what really is ha what happened? The period went from 2 pi to 8 pi, right? It got horizontally stretched. And again, when we horizontally stretch something, that's going to change those, ver those are going to change those asymptotes. Um, there is no phase shift, right? There's no adding or subtracting shift in left and right. Uh, we can see, though, we do have a vertical translation, uh, which is up one. So the graph has gotten shifted up one. Now, to identify, to understand the range, I think we, we need to understand what the reciprocal graph looks like. So y equals 2 cosine of x over 4 plus 1. Okay, So let's just think about what cosine represents. Let's think about the range of cosine. So if you look at that, although it's our parent graph, we know that cosine has a range, or at least the parent graph of cosine. Let's just do cosine of x. That is the parent graph of cosine. So the parent graph of cosine has a range of negative 1 to 1. The lowest point is negative 1. The highest point is positive 1, right? And then last class period, we discussed that when you multiply that by 2, that vertically stretches the graph. Now the low point is negative 2. The positive point is, or the highest point is positive 2. So everybody remember that. That's from last class period. That's why last class period lesson was helpful to understand. So right now, the range is negative 1 to 1 multiplied by 2, negative 2 to positive 2. And then the graph got shifted up 1. So now the range is from negative 1 to 3, right? So the range of this graph with these transformations is from negative 1 to 3. But again, we need to understand how does, the, how does the graph of secant relate to the graph of cosecant? Well, it's really this graph in the opposite directions, right? Now, again, they do share those coordinate points, right? Again, by knowing, like looking at the unit circle, um, like let's look at pi, negative 1, 0. Like, the x coordinate is negative 1. 1 over negative 1 is still negative 1, right? So they share these maximum points, minimum points. So when I'm looking for the range, basically I'm looking for, well, if my graph is from negative 1 to 3, my, new, my range for cosecant then is from negative infinity to negative, to negative 1, and then from 3 all the way up to infinity. Between negative 1 and 3 is where the cosine graph is, right? which is actually not a part of the graph for secant. You guys agree? See that? Yes? So the range, I should have done my work over here. Let's actually, let's do the range. Let's put this over here. Because I don't want you guys to think it's not really work that's a part of this problem. It's to understand the problem. So that, so based on these transformations here, the range of this we said was negative 1 to 3. So instead of following the formula that I gave you in notes, we're going to say negative infinity to negative 1. It includes negative 1 over, right? Remember I said that they share that point? And then it continues at 3 to infinity. And if I want to show that these are unified in support, they're still part of the same answer, I could just conjoin them by using a nice little union symbol. Okay, And don't worry, guys. We'll be doing more practice. Now, vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptote of this graph, of the parent graph, for secant, right? You can look at your graph. You say, OK, in my notes, x equals 
pi halves plus pi n. Right? That was the that was from the parent graph. Pi half plus pi n. But what did we do? We stretched the graph, right? So we have to include that. That's going to change the asymptotes. So all we're going to do is we're going to take whatever was inside of our function, x over 4, and we're going to set that to our equation for our asymptote, which is pi halves plus pi n. Now, how do we solve for x? Well, x is being divided by 4, so if we want to undo divided by 4, we're just going to simply multiply by 4. So x equals 2 pi plus pi n. Yeah? No? What happens when you multiply 4 times x over 4? You get x. 4 times pi halves is 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. And 4 times pi over 4, oops, I'm sorry. That's 4 pi n, right? I didn't distribute all the way. So therefore, that's going to be 2 pi plus 2 pi plus 4 pi n. Yeah? Got it? No? Kind of? That's why we're going to do a lot of practice. Lucky you guys. All right.